right, hello everyone, and welcome to Star Trek Fenrir, the stream where everything is improv and the warp factor doesn't matter. For those who don't know what Fenrir is, it's a tabletop role-playing game using the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We're set in 2410 aboard a Cerberus class that is following in the footsteps of the USS Ophion. You don't need to have watched Ophion to enjoy this game, though you will catch a few references and subtle nods if you do. You can find the VODs for both Fenrir and Ophion on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Now, today's session will be science-focused and perhaps a, a little bit spooky. I can't really say for certain how effective horror-type stuff will work with this group, but there's one way to find out. Uh, one other special announcement I have is that I currently have a Kickstarter going for an original tabletop RPG system slash setting known as Mermaids After the End. It's a post-apocalyptic transhumanist oceanic setting that has the unique quality of using D12s for most things. I know, right? Finally used for those dusty D12s that nobody ever uses ever. Um, if you haven't already checked it out, I encourage you to do so. Uh, we're already pretty close to meeting the initial goal, and it's not that much past it until we hit our first stretch goal. So if you want to check it out, one of the mods can drop a link. They should have the command for that somewhere. Uh, I'll also try to remember to link it in the YouTube description. Uh, the last thing I have to say is, before I run the intro, is that whatever support you can provide for the stream, be it a follow, sub, donation, bits, patron, talking and chat, whatever, it's all greatly appreciated. And with that said, let's go ahead and run the intro and dive right in. <laughs> I cannot say for certain whether or not this is Psy Omega uh, version 2. But welcome back, everybody. Uh, as you may or may not know, something I like doing for all my Star Trek games is having an open monologue uh, as read and or prepared by the players. So for Star Trek Adventures, as you probably can gather, that's a captain's log. And we have a captain with us tonight. So Captain Archuleta, if you'd be so kind. Sure. Captain's log, stardate 87937.6. I think the crew, barring our chief engineer, has had enough time travel to last a lifetime. And I'm right there with them. The attitude on board has been relaxed and at ease since we departed from Deep Space Day Dallas. Everyone is performing to expectation as we map Sector 041A, an uncharted area near the Tholian border. If I was asked to name the quietest border in the quadrant, it'd probably be this one. I'm doubtful we'll have much issue from our friends on the other side of the fence. In moments of reflection, I can't help but wonder what their home world is like. Our science team is enjoying being busy parsing through the sensor readings, but the rest of the crew has spent more time hovering over their velocity tournament brackets than stressing about job duties. I, for one, don't mind. In fact, I predicted Lieutenant LL to win myself. End log. Very nice. Now, uh, as the players know, I already told them what the first scene was going to be because I wanted to prepare them. But the uh, very first scene, we actually cut to the quarters of Mr. Lee Tobin. Now, uh, Mr. Tobin, what are, what are your quarters like? I know we have a visual here, but uh, what have you done to sort of customize the space and make it your own? Well, the quarters are still relatively Spartan. I haven't brought in many personal belongings, but there is a small Bajoran shrine set up in uh, a sort of prominent area inside the main living quarters. Um, so you have the uh, small uh, incense table, the uh, various different accoutrements of the Bajoran religion, and you see that uh, there are actually two different earrings uh, that are sitting atop that little shrine area, in addition to the one that uh, currently adorns Lee Tobin's ear. <clears throat> okay. So, Tobin, you are doing something in your quarters, reading a book, perhaps praying at the shrine, when there's a chime at your door. Uh, enter. And in steps everybody's favorite ensign, Mr. Jensen, as played by Mr. Williams. <laughs> 
<laughs> I knew it. Uh, hey, uh, Commander Lee, nice. Wow, really nice quarters. Uh, I, can I come in? Uh, of course, uh, Anson. I'll rise from the ground in front of the uh, Bajoran Shrine and direct him towards the, uh, the couch in the living room. Please uh, have a seat. Thanks. I uh, just wanted to wanted to talk to you about something here real quick, if I if uh, I could. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Anson, is that... Are you wearing a Bajoran earring? Oh, yeah, yeah. You told me, you know, you told me to embrace the prophets. Uh, I've been... I've been really working hard on that, but I just I haven't been able to get up the nerve to actually get my ear pierced. So this one is just a holographic <laughs> overlay. I see. Um, <clears throat> Ensign, you do realize that adorning yourself with the uh, the traditional religious icon of our faith without actually having the earring pierced is a grave affront. Ah, uh, computer, discontinue program, Jensen Seven Beta. And of course, the holographic earring just shimmers away into nothingness. Thank you. I, 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 I would never do anything to to besmirch the prophet or or or, or their teachings. They've they helped me so much. Uh, I'm trying to find my Dajara, and uh, it's just it's been really hard. I'm not really good at art, so um, you know. It's it's difficult. I'm, just, I'm trying to find my niche here before I really, before I really, you know, go in for a in for a pound on this. Hmm. Well, I must admit that um, the more artistic sphere of creation was never something in which I was particularly skilled. Uh, did you want to speak about that, or I mean, I, although I am an adherent of the faith, I, I'm not an expert in any means. How can I help you? Well, all right. This may sound crazy, but I think that I had a vision from the prophets. Well, that uh, that is a powerful experience, and I must admit, if you have, I'm somewhat jealous because they've never deigned to speak with me directly. But can you tell me about this experience? In what way have they touched you or reached out to you? Well, okay. Um, so you remember when we were trying to beam that transwarp conduit off the, the, the derelict Borg sphere? Okay, so uh, first I couldn't get a transporter lock. I, 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 I got everybody else back, but I couldn't just couldn't get the coil. Uh, and then uh, Maddox came and just he sort of shoulder-checked me out of the way, um, and I hit my head. And when I hit my head, um, I, heard a, I heard a voice, and it said, You are the Jensen. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it was one of the prophets. Well, <clears throat> Ensign, uh, in, in ancient days on Bajor, um, there was a great deal of sectarian violence. And I, I must admit that there was a tendency to suppress the evolution of new expressions of the faith. And it led to some severe religious conflicts, um, terribly bloody times. And I, I, I mean, no offense to you, but right now I understand this ancient tradition of my people. Um, you seem to be suggesting that you are in some way equivalent to the emissary, the Cisco. Who? <laughs> Excuse me. I will get up, walk over to the replicator. Um, replicator, are you programmed to make non synthaholic beverages? It requires a command level authorization as per directed by Captain Archuleta. Tap my comm badge. <clears throat> um, would I actually have that authorization or would I have to go to a As the lieutenant command? commander, you could you could override it. Basically it's so that the crewmen and the ensigns can't just, you know, replicate themselves, whatever. Hmm. Replicator, um, override the limitation on synthaholic beverages. Authorization, uh, Tobin, THX 1138. Authorization accepted. Input waiting. Thank you. Um, Klingon Firewine. And materializing in the replicator is a Klingon goblet uh, <laughs> that is sort of uh, vase-like in design where it kind of dips in the middle and comes back out. Maybe like an hourglass shape. 
Um, but uh, it, the liquid that it materializes in the cup is uh, very strong smelling. Uh, it smells like uh, almost rubbing alcohol, if I had to give it a, a smell. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, Tobin will just down that in one go. Okay. <clears throat> I'd like you to roll me a fitness and a medicine, please. <laughs> Difficulty of one. <laughs> and I'm not just doing this for momentum. This may actually impact things to come. One complication. All right, two successes. You start off with one momentum. You know how to handle your liquor, especially Klingon stuff. You're fine. Especially Klingon stuff. Okay. Um, Ensign. <clears throat> I'll put the goblet back in the replicator and it dematerializes as it's uh, reclamated by the device. Now, Ensign, <clears throat> you, you said that you had studied the faith in the past um, or that you have begun to explore it. And... Um, what exactly do you know about the faith if you don't know who the great Cisco, the emissary of the prophets, the one who uh, reopened and rediscovered the celestial temple actually is? Uh, well, um, <clears throat> see, I've been uh, doing some reading in the Federation archives. Uh, and the, the, the majority uh, of things that I've found, um, the record gets a little bit spotty. Uh, but it actually uh, suggests that uh, the... The prophets or the Federation archive refers to them as wormhole aliens, but you and I both know that's not true. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, it it seems to indicate that they're uh, non-corporeal, at least partially energy-based beings. Well, uh, that would be a vague approximation of their nature. Certainly, that um, that's a scientific uh, attempt at understanding that which is utterly ineffable, but. Um, Right, Continue. but I, I just, just, just stay with me. I'm going to try to going to try to loop it back around here on, on my point. Um, <clears throat> so, the prophets seem to be able to exist in multiple realities and multiple timelines simultaneously. With all the timeline shenanigans that have been going on here for the past little while, or at least up until the past little while, uh, it sort of got me thinking. Uh, I mean, it's it's possible that. The reason that I have never heard of this, the Cisco, uh, is because temporally it hasn't actually happened yet. I excuse me for a moment. <clears throat> I will go over to my desk. Mm -hmm. I will retrieve a medical tricorder, mm -hmm. pick it up. Mm -hmm. Stare at it for a moment. Go back to the replicator. Replicator. Um, vodka. Just Designate straight. proof. Are there any limitations on your ability to provide vodka? I mean, what is the highest alcohol content that you can offer me? Replicating clear water. Or what is it? Uh, not clear water. Ever fire water. Ever. Everclear, no, that's what it is. Everclear, <laughs> replicating Everclear, and a sure. uh, little shot glass of almost what? Because Everclear is what ninety proof. Not even Tito's. Like, come on. <laughs> just, just straight Everclear. For those who don't drink, Everclear will mess you up very quickly. It's. You might as well order Jungle Juice. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've I've drank it and then used it as a paint thinner. Like, yeah. just this shit will knock you in your ass. Just, just it's... set up an ethanol drip. <laughs> It's easier. I will reach down, pick it up, stare at it for a moment, back to the medical tricorder, put the tricorder down. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Tobin, to, or Lee Tobin, to uh, Commander Saniri. This is Saniri. Go ahead. Um, I'm currently engaged in a an in-depth philosophical conversation with Lieutenant Jensen, with Ensign Jensen. Um, would you prepare sickbay, please, for any potential eventuality? 
I'll have several counselors and therapists on standby for you. Uh, also, there may be some alcohol poisoning involved. Okay, that's not the route I would have taken, but that is your prerogative. We all deal with our trauma in different ways. Jensen's not a... Okay, yeah, he is kind of a walking trauma, but what are you going to do? Thank you, Commander. All right. So as you continue your discussion with uh, Jensen, we're actually going to now cut to the bridge. And yeah. since you are just sort of charting uh, unexplored space... Not a whole lot to go on on the bridge uh, at the moment. Uh, Captain Archuleta is there along with a few, uh, you know, red shirt ensigns, uh, standard sort of uh, support crew. Uh, but it is at that moment that uh, Mr. Vassar, uh, you walk onto the bridge to deliver some form of report to the captain. Captain, I have a report for you. Um, different than your standard reports? No. Okay. Why is it hand-delivered, then? The science lab is currently occupied, and my presence is not required there. I oh. felt a stroll would be appealing. Oh, meandering. I can appreciate that. She'll take the pad and look at what's on it. What's on it, Dag? I'm going to let you define what's on it. <laughs> it is a series of cataloged sensory phenomenon within two light years of our present condition. Oh, okay. That is actually very important. Uh, roll me a reason science difficulty of two, but you have advanced sensors. So that's knocked down to a difficulty of one. And if someone can get the uh, Fenrir sensors and science. I'll grab the ship. Okay. All right, one success from the ship. Hmm. Any uh, specialty? Any focus apply? You have one. That's all I will say. Huh, thanks. Interesting. A complication. Oh. So that's three successes. So you do get two momentum. Uh, but with the complication, what I'm going to say is that you, as far as you can tell within the first, or what is it, uh, the one or two light years out from the Fenrir that you have scanned, um, you're not detecting really anything. I mean, obviously there's interstellar dust. There's... Uh, stray subspace waves, you know, the standard deep space type stuff, but you're not detecting planets or any nearby stars. You are literally just sort of in a, in a void between the void, if that makes sense. Um, but the complication is that during the scanning, you're beginning to notice that there is an abnormal buildup of quote unquote junk data, uh, almost as if you were to put a cell phone near a microwave, if that makes any sense. As you can see in these locations, and Bizarre will point on the pad, mm -hmm. uh, there appears to be some kind of random anomaly that is uh, registering as nothing. There seems to be a uh, part of space that is, for all intents and purposes, devoid of planetary or stellar bodies. Mm. Looks like a smoking gun to me. I am unsure if there is a firearm in the vicinity, but I can scan again if you wish. Oh, it's from a hollow novel. Um, so she'll kind of like pace a little bit. Um, and GM, are we immediately close to this area? I mean, you're, like, you're deep <laughs> within it at this moment. Oh, we're in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're picking up nothing. Well, again, other than the standard interstellar dust and particulate mm -hmm. that you would expect, no, there's nothing out here. But I should qualify, it's not like the episode of Voyager 
where they are in the literal nothing of blackness. I, I forget the the name of it offhand. Um, was Magical it a, darkness. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, was it maybe a subspace bubble? I'm thinking. Um, but mm. yeah, it's not like that. You are seeing stars. You are picking up readings from other places. It's just that the immediate area is devoid of stuff. Okay, uh, Vassar, do we know where this stops and starts? When did we start picking up this data? You're muted. Yeah, you are muted. <laughs> the limits of this area seem to be focused in a three light year radius. How close are we to the center? Approximately 1.6 light years. Uh, let's go check it out. And it is at that moment, everybody but Vassar across the entire ship, there's a momentary blip where you blink your eyes. The next thing you know, you are waking up on the floor or in a chair, whatever you were seated or standing in. You are now waking up as if you had collapsed on the spot. The Fenrir is at red alert. And damage reports are coming in across every single deck. And this happens to everyone across the entire ship. Except Vassar. And Vassar, I'm going to give you a very special handout. Which you may disseminate at your choosing. You should see what Vassar sees during etc. etc. During the blip, uh, could Vassar uh, catch the captain before uh, she falls? Yes. So what I would say perhaps is as you as she kind of collapses on the spot, you maybe catch her mid motion and maneuver her into her chair. Yep. Captain, are you okay? Uh. No. What happened? I am attempting to consume the sensory data for the last 32 seconds. Uh, everybody on the bridge passed out and no hails were responded to throughout the ship. Okay, can we contact our senior staff? We're alone on the bridge, right? I mean, you have other red shirts and personnel, but they're nameless NPCs, but all of them are waking up. They're like checking their bodies. They're checking okay. frantically, you know, trying to figure out what just happened. Okay, so she's going to tap her comm badge and re try and reach engineering. Matic, you get this. Matic, same thing. You literally woke up on the floor of main engineering. Captain to engineering. Engineering here, Captain. What can uh, I help you with? Status report. Um, we have people looking over logs now, but it appears we just lost about 32 seconds. Um. I promise I had nothing to do with this this time. Um, but I will figure out, we will work together to try to figure out what's going on. Um, I'm going to run a systems check through engineering to ensure uh, nothing is missing, tampered with, uh, in danger of failing, et cetera, et cetera. All right, thank you. Keep me informed. Real quick. I suspect. Yeah. Uh, before we continue, I do want to make that a roll. Uh, Matic, if you could roll me a insight in engineering, a difficulty of one. And you will have a focus in power systems. Insight engineering. Survey says. My computer's being stuff. One success. One success is all you need. So, again, you are reading the damage reports as they're coming in. And specifically, you are seeing... Uh, let me roll this first. Okay. You are seeing uh, breaches to the structure. And these are actual breaches to the ship, so make sure you're recording them. Uh, a breach to structure, we'll say somewhere on deck 9, the lateral uh, underside of the saucer, has been breached. As well as a breach along the primary, uh, what is it? The primary EPS conduit that leads out of the warp core. It is currently sparking and otherwise on the fritz. Uh, it's still working, but you're bleeding power pretty quickly. Um, 
Maddox will just kind of send that report to Captain Archuleta. Uh, he will get a secondary team uh, with Jensen to the uh, rupture on the hull on the ninth level. Him mm-hmm. and anyone who wants to assist him will be at main engineering working on the work board. Okay. Now we go back to the bridge. You may continue, Captain Archuleta. Okay. Um, I want to contact Sickbay, so bridge to Sickbay. This is Saniri. Uh, go ahead, Captain. What, what the hell just happened? I'm getting well, casualty reports across the ship. Uh, what kind of reports are you getting? I'm hoping to maybe get a scan of somebody to see if there are, was anything going on medically during those seconds. Well, uh, I'm reporting, I'm getting reports that apparently everybody lost somewhere on the neighborhood of 29 to 32 seconds. Uh, a lot of injuries coming in, mostly bumps and bruises, uh, two serious ones. Uh, the two serious ones should be under control here within the next several minutes. Can you tell me um, if the nature of the event was neurological across anyone you scan or if there was something I guess I'm trying to ask if it was like a bioweapon or something and there's a moment where you hear Saniri think that over and say, I will run scans and get back to you on that, Captain. Uh, however, my hands are needed. So if there's anything else, uh, please nope. let one of my nurses know. Thank you. I will transfer my hollow emitter sensory data to uh, a nursing station at MedBay. Okay. So we'll cut to MedBay. Cool. Jensen and Tobin, you are not there yet. But yeah, uh, as you uh, rematerialize in sickbay, uh, you find that all of the bio beds are currently double packed. Um, there's just that many injuries coming in. And what really matters is that Saniri, Savia, all the nurses are triaging to the best of their ability. Um, my, pri- my secondary... Su- uh- my secondary subroutines require that I provide triage services if anybody gets injured sufficiently to require them. And Saniri just sort of sees you materialize, hear you say this, and just throws a tricorder to you and says, go crazy. <laughs> I, I begin scanning the nearest bed that is not being attended to. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me a reason medicine. A difficulty of, let's call this a two. Uh, with xenobiology apply here uh, i'm gonna say no if only because um these are known alien species whereas usually for xeno we're talking like new stuff okay so with one success i'm gonna let that succeed at cost which means i get two threat um but what you find is that the readings you took during the blip what was in the handout they are consistent across every single individual you scan. Um, Vassar to Commander Lee Tobin. Uh, Lee Tobin here. I apologize to disturb you. Uh, I hope you are okay. I have confirmed medical reports from the blip. Uh, I was online during the 32 seconds that uh, everybody else seemed to be out. I would like to forward that medical data to you for a second opinion. Uh, I'm, well, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mostly drunk right now. Um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I, I didn't. Are you saying that uh, other people lost consciousness? <laughs> yes, the ship experienced what seemed to be a kind of collision, and the entire ship was unconscious for 32 seconds. Uh, this medical data is extremely sensitive and provocative, and I would advise that uh, you look it over, uh, perhaps after uh, negating your inebriation. Could you say that more slowly in a way that I can understand while I'm drunk and also just recovering from whatever that was. Your tricorder has a message. Please read it. 
Thank you. Uh, I'll yeah. turn over to Jensen. Jensen, um, let's let's just finish this conversation later. Uh, get, get out of my quarters, please. <laughs> <laughs> You're muted, Williams. Uh, yes, sir. Right away. Uh, just let me say, though, it's been fascinating to observe this Bajoran ritual. That good goodbye. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd have a witty retort for you, Anson, but uh, not today. And sure enough, the moment he's gone, uh, your tricorder beeps, and there is a message that appears on it. Now, Vassar, is he getting everything that was in the handout? Yes. Okay, then I will enable this for Mr. Lee Tobin as well. You too should now see a handout in Roll20. And Vassar will continue providing emerg emergency medical support for anybody who is injured. Okay. Uh, why don't we make uh, another roll about that, just so uh, we're keeping track of uh, casualties across the crew. Go ahead and roll me, uh, let's say, what is your medicine? A four? Roll me six challenge die. All right, yeah, with uh, six successes, or six work done, quote-unquote, uh, yeah, you actually, with your help, uh, sick bay is able to get a handle on all the incoming patients. And though things aren't going to die down for quite a while, uh, you have at least stabilized the situation. Saneri is able to handle the most egregiously wounded and all the other injuries that are coming in, bumps, bruises, etc., etc. Um, you're able to handle those just fine. Now, what I'm curious is, what does Tobin do with this information now that he uh, has had a chance to read it? Uh, Tobin would, first of all, find an anti-intoxicant <laughs> and inject himself just to make sure that he's entirely clear-headed. Okay. And then reread the message that was sent to him now that he has been sobered artificially. Um, Lieutenant Tobin to... Captain Archuleta. Go ahead. Have you uh, conversed with uh, Lieutenant Commander Vassar? I have. And did he describe the nature of the incident in which the Fenrir was just involved? I'm not sure about the nature, but go ahead. Um, I'm going to head to the bridge. I'd like to discuss this with you in person, if that's all right. Sounds great. And I will take the turbo lift up the bridge. Okay. For set piece sake, are you going to actually on the bridge or are you going to cut to the ready room instead? Ready room. Yeah. Ready room. All right. So Rast is not here. So Captain Archuleta, you're chilling in your ready room, just getting a, a read on all the reports coming in when there's a chime mm -hmm. at your door. Yeah, come in. And in steps Mr. Tobin. Captain. Uh, Hi. Are you feeling okay? Well, I'm feeling better than I was about uh, 15 minutes ago. Uh, I don't know that that's due to the fact that I've taken an anti-intoxicant or that <laughs> I'm not with Benson Jensen any longer. Oh. Probably both. At any rate, <clears throat> um, I received a message from Lieutenant Commander Vassar, and I'm surprised that he hasn't shared the substance of his findings with you. I believe he's in sick bay. Why don't you go ahead? Well, it seems, based on the sensor records that he was able to piece together, the crew, when they were rendered unconscious, was actually dead for approximately 0 0.5 milliseconds. Everyone, what? every living person across the ship. What about people who are asleep, not conscious? Well, I'd have to cross-reference the uh, internal sensor records against mm -hmm. uh, the individuals who were off duty at that point. But it seems based on his preliminary findings. Everyone. Yes. Hmm. Small clarification, not just the people, the fish, the dogs, the cats, every living thing, period. So something is definitely doesn't want us in this area of space. I'm also somewhat concerned, Captain, that Lieutenant Bassar did not share this information with you. 
perhaps he felt self-conscious that he was not included. Um, I'll be sure to ask him about that. I can't tell if that's like leading me to ask that or what, but um, how about we, we talk to sick bay? Uh, I'm just going to have her door open in the ready room. So anyone who comes in or needs to talk to her can just come in. But for now, she's just going to com badge uh, Captain the sick bay. Okay. Uh, we'll say Vassar picks up for sake of use. This is Commander Vassar, Captain. Go ahead. Uh, Vassar, I'm speaking with Commander Lee, and he informed me that scans revealed that... Are you where other people can hear you, by the way? I am. Could you, uh, you know, get to a more secure area? <laughs> I will be there in a moment, and I will rematerialize in the captain's ready room. Okay. <laughs> so, and uh, Vassar appears. So, I'm not sure when you discovered this, Vassar, but it turns out that for about half a minute, everyone on the crew was dead. The record should show that it was for 0 0.05 milliseconds. Uh, everyone on the crew appeared to cease all cellular functions. I had to confirm my readings with the internal sensors, and then I asked Commander Lee to double check my work. I did not want to report it, as I felt that it might cause a panic among the crew that was already suffering from severe um, injury and or disorientation. I apologize. It's all right. I am now curious about how we just got jump started back up. I mean, even if it was for a millisecond, did we get turned off and turned back on? The readings are inconclusive on that matter. Given that all cellular activity stopped entirely, this was beyond simply death. It's almost as if we entered into some kind of subspace stasis that actually rendered all of us completely and utterly inert. I would suspect that a subspace stasis would prevent my program from processing sensory data during the time affected. Hmm. However, we have encountered stranger phenomena. Uh a subspace disturbance is what you're saying of some kind of some kind well was it everyone on the crew at the same time or did it emanate from a particular point in space nearby it began as the ship seemed to experience a collision uh, and it looks like the damage reports provided by commander matic are confirming damage to the ship sufficient with such a condition Mm. Uh, once the ship stopped shaking, everybody returned to their normal functions, biologically speaking. Now, Can quick, I send out a subspace okay. hail? Who would you like possible? to call? Ghostbusters. Well, I mean, besides <laughs> the Ghostbusters, who would you like I, to call? Um, this is just a generic message. Can I do that? Sure. You're just doing a general sort of area message, as it were. Yeah. And it's along the lines of um, we're, um, it's a very apologetic, as in, you know, like we didn't see you, basically. <laughs> so, sort of a, hey, sorry, we, we hit you. We didn't mean to. Uh, mm -hmm. I need to, we, we need to swap insurance information, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah. All right. Uh, roll me a presence and command. Okay. And if someone can get a communications and a command for the ship, I think this is like the second time in any of my STA games that we've actually used communications for a ship. Uh, 
Um, Starfleet Protocol? Yeah, that would apply. You do need to get their insurance information. I was not okay. joking. Okay. Three successes. Let's see if the ship gets you anything. Cool. Again, that is a communications and command. Who's doing that? Last one. All right, so no help from the ship. Just total of three successes, which means you get one momentum. Uh, the hail goes out, Captain. Uh, you can confirm that it does eventually reach back to Deep Space Daedalus, uh, but nobody in the area replies. There mm. are uh, no hails coming towards your ship. Okay. And while you're doing that, uh, Vassar... Uh, would it be safe for me to say that you have been consistently interfaced with the ship's computers and the sensors? You're muted. Muted. But I got what you said, yes. <laughs> um, I would like you to roll me a reason science, uh, assisted by the ship's sensor science. The total difficulty on this is going to be a four. And yeah, it's just going to be a difficulty of four. I'm not going to mess with the complication range. Uh, applicable focus. Yes, you you have one. Again, I'm trying to keep it vague because I want, don't want to spoil the mystery. Mm -hmm. Is the difficulty for before or after advanced sensors? Uh, advanced after advanced sensors. So, Vassar, if you wanted to roll additional dice, I'm going to let you do it because um, you only have two right now. Hmm. You do have four momentum for which to buy additional dice. Um. Yeah. What is the momentum to dice conversion? Uh, it is one momentum for one die, three momentum for two die. Uh, does anybody have a problem with me rolling Spend two it. dice? Go right ahead. Oh. But... All right, two more dice incoming. <laughs> Four successes is all you need. Uh, someone get the ship as well, sensor science from the ship, and uh, might get momentum on this. All right, so the ship doesn't help you out. But Vassar, you now get this handout. Should be problems with scanning. Uh, standing inside uh, Captain Archuleta's ready room, uh, Vassar will straighten up and his eyes will sort of stare into the distance uh, as he seems to be uh, processing New data. <laughs> the sensors seem to be fluctuating throughout the ship, Captain. What's the nature of these fluctuations? Uh, processing. Stand by. Captain, I'm beginning to worry about him. Are? The sensors are... They are reacting in a way that is familiar, but not to this area of space. Uh, if you have heard of the area of space known as the Delta Triangle, it is a vast uninhabited sector of the Milky Way galaxy located three weeks away from the nearest Federation starbase via subspace radio. It is known for having a high number of mysterious disappearances of starships recorded since space flight became a thing among the cultures within the Federation. <laughs> the effect is known to be a result of the parallel time continuum known as Alicia. However, there are no signs that there is another alternate time continuum at play here. I will need to feed this data to Commander Maddock in the hopes that we can filter out this overwhelming and confusing amount of sensor data. Hmm. 
Hmm. Are your is your program functioning optimally, Vassar? I am not compromised, Captain. Okay. Vassar, would you mind if I ran a diagnostic on your uh, processing subroutines? Feel free, Commander. Thank you. Yelich, could I do that? Yeah, reason engineering, uh, difficulty of two. And if you have holograms, that would be a good focus. And I will use my um, reason engineering. The talent gives me one success Okay. with an increased complication range. No applicable focus. Three successes, you get one momentum. I'm going to let Vassar describe what's going on with his program, because as you can probably tell uh, via webcam, for those who can't see, Vassar is doing a masterful sort of glitchy effect, uh, <laughs> which, you know, his head's twitching a little bit, his eyes are a little bit spazzy. Uh, something is definitely going on with Vassar, but Vassar, or out of character, what's going on with you? Uh, basically, um, the sensors are registering a serious amount of flux across the spectrum that the sensors can read. Um, due to the fact that the flux is so rapid, uh, the sensor data is registering in uh, with Vassar uh, faster than he can process it. So he's essentially lagging while he attempts to make sense of the sensor data coming in through the ship. Captain, Jeez. I believe that... Uh, I apologize, Captain. Please, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, based on the results of my investigation into uh, Lieutenant Commander Prasar's programming, it seems like he's attempting to process far too much information, far more than his program is actually designed to engage with at any single time. I'd recommend that we try to disconnect him from the ship's center systems. I agree. Um... He's wearing, is, he's not wearing a hollow emitter right now, right? Not at the moment, no. Okay. Um, we have to find a way to segment out his program. So. Perhaps we should contact Commander Medic. Yeah. Uh, Captain to engineering. Medic here. How can I help you, Cap? Uh, we're having some issues with Vassar and need to cut him off from the sensor, incoming sensor data. Can you take care of that? Um, unless the power systems decide to start giving me an issue, um, I can isolate his program and remove it from the, uh, computer core. Um, he'll be there physically. Um, however, until we get his hollow emitter attached to him, I don't believe that he'll really be able to be much help, if that makes any sense. Right, because he won't be connected. Right. Right. Makes sense. Let's do it. Does anyone know where he keeps his hollow emitter? <laughs> Science Lab 4. Okay, we'll be sure to get that. <laughs> so, uh, Matic, I'd like you to roll me a control and engineering. The ship will assist you with a computer's engineering. The difficulty on this is going to be a 3. And uh, either success or fail on this, uh, Jensen will run up with the hollow emitter. Because apparently, when we need a we need an ensign to run something from a science lab, it's Jensen. Um, <clears throat> no power say, systems is not going to apply here. Okay. Um, quantum mechanics. No, you're dealing with a hologram. You're literally maneuver. You know, you're you're taking a chunk of a program and segmenting it from a computer. Oh well. Um, I'll spend a momentum for a third dice if everyone's okay with that. Go for yeah. Three successes. All we need to see is the computer's engineering from the ship to see if you get any more momentum. Okay, right. I'll do that one. Computers and engineering. Also, we got the two momentum from my previous role, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
Very nice. You are a total of four momentum by my <clears throat> count. So yeah, Matic, this is old hat for you. You've dealt with systems like this before. You're very easily with just a few keystrokes across the console to segment Vassar off. And Vassar, it is almost like you are carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders and that weight has lifted and you're able to think more clearly, uh, maybe not act as efficiently as you would were you connected normally, uh, but you can at least think clearly for a moment. Um, and as you are talking uh, through this, as you're processing what just happened, uh, Mr. Jensen comes running onto the bridge and Williams, uh, if you would care to uh, role play Jensen coming onto the bridge. Sure. Uh, oh, I've got, uh, hello, everybody. I've got the uh, mobile emitter just as request. Fascinating. He takes a look at Vassar and says, very reminiscent of an Aurelian mating dance. Give me that. <laughs> Bree's going to try and just take it. <laughs> so she can snatch it out of his hand. That's fine. And, uh,. Uh, do you mind, Vassar? <laughs> of course, Captain. I'm just going to tap it. I will phase and then rematerialize out of the emitter. Okay. And yeah, all your problems are fixed. You are now isolated onto that uh, single uh, hollow emitter on your shoulder. Also, yes, I am aware that Tobin dropped for a moment. We'll have him back shortly. Okay. So... Vassar. Yes, Captain. You remember what just happened? Yes. Uh, a significant amount of data was overloading my neurosynaptic processors. Okay. Um, if t Where's our navigator? I guess I can just ask Vassar. Um, do you know if our ship, if the ship has uh, navigational abilities right now? The ship should be undamaged beyond commandermatic report. But do we know where we are if we try and find out where we are? At this time, I would be unable to predict our location beyond our last reported coordinates. Okay. Uh, can you cross-reference anything in your archives that might be similar to what we're experiencing now? If you are familiar with the old earth phenomenon called the Bermuda Triangle, apply that to this region of space. And have we seen that, have we seen this phenomenon in space anywhere else in our map, in our surveying? In the Federation database, there is a location called the Delta Triangle, but the conditions of that region are not completely present here. Okay. I'm wondering if we ran into maybe not another vessel, but a subspace structure of some kind that we can't physically see. Um, a subspace structure or perhaps a dark matter remnant. Either would be good to explore as a cause for the damage to the ship. Hmm. It is at this moment that as you're discussing this, the door opens. Well, I guess you said you kept the door open, but mm -hmm. <laughs> literally materializing out of the ether is Mr. Matic. And Matic, you had just left engineering. Like, you had literally just walked out of the double doors, but now you're in the captain's ready room. Uh, that was fast. Um, <laughs> Matic's going to turn around and he's going to walk back through the doors. You emerge onto the bridge. You do not merge back in engineering. You're just on the bridge now. Matic to engineering. This is engineering, sir. Uh, where'd you go? You vanished on us. Is everything all right? 
Uh, throw something through the door. Throwing something now, sir. And a, uh, a tricorder literally materializes and is thrown into the captain's ready room. Fuck. Okay, what? What? <laughs> um... That's interesting. Um... So you said dark matter. As a possibility only. Possibility, Captain. okay. I may recommend uh, that we deploy subspace buoys if we intend to move from our present location. That way right. we'll be Bread able crumbs. to track the movement of the ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely do that. And are our shields up? Uh, red alert was called, so yes, they are automatically okay. up. Okay. Um, quick question for you, H. Uh, mm -hmm. The damage to the warp core power systems? Correct. What kind of damage was it? Was it just like an overload? Was it an attack? Like what, An overload what would probably be the best way to describe it, yes. As if... Were there any residual... I don't know. Something... I, I think I see what you're going with. If you will imagine that basically you hit something and all of the power of the warp core was more or less shunted to the navigational deflector and the deflector just simply wasn't ready for it. So somewhere along the line, the power surged and blew out a few conduits. Now, as you're thinking of that, uh, we're actually going to cut to the first scene where uh, Williams is present as Williams and not as Jensen. <laughs> So, Williams, you are running ragged over the ship. You are trying to uh, more or less get a handle on the situation. You know, you're you're in the field, as it were. Right. Um, but as you are running through the corridors, it takes you a moment to realize it. But as you pass the same door three times in a row, you think you've entered into a loop. Oh, that's perfect. Um, do I have my tricorder on me? You do. Would you like to pull it out and look at it? I would love to take some readings. You start to take some readings when the the readout stops and the instrument goes dead for maybe about 10 seconds. Um, and then you, you know, maybe shake the tricorder, you know, <clears throat> smack it a few times. Just hit it off the wall, give it a Rogaine adjustment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when you look at it, the screen again, it says the following... A cat's internal temperature is the same as a human's before it is introduced to an oven. Okay. Unsubscribe. <laughs> Unfollow. <From Cat Fest. laughs> it's just, uh, what is going on? Huh. Can I try to clear the, uh, like, you know, clear the cache and cookies of the tricorder and just try this again? Yeah, you clear the cache and it starts working normally again. That's odd. Yeah, I want to. I want to take some, um, some detailed scans of this section of corridor just to see if there are any sort of uh, anomalies or perhaps folds in space. Okay, go ahead and roll me a reason, and we'll call this a reason science. Uh, difficulty of two. Cool. Uh, all right, I'm gonna. Do we have any momentum? Uh, I believe you have four at the moment. Unfortunately, <clears throat> Tobin is experiencing connection issues. So. Ah, got it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend one of those. Okay. Uh, and I don't have a focus. <sighs> Interesting. Uh, would you like to give me two momentum to get rid of that complication? How you think, guys? Do we have? You have three, three at the moment. Yeah. All right. Buy it off. <laughs> All right. So with the two successes, you find the following information. Uh, there appears to be a, a miniature like wormhole effect that is approximately about 10 meters ahead of you in the corridor and another one approximately 20 meters behind you. So that's probably where the looping effect is coming from. Now we're thinking with portals. Now, 
as far mm-hmm. as the tricorder is concerned, it never displayed the unsolicited cat fact. It uh, it has no memory of it. It has literally no cat facts in its memory. Of um, you know, unless you call them up, but right, okay. Um, Williams to Vassar. Vassar here. Commander, I'm going to forward you some tricorder data. Could you take a look at this? I seem to be stuck. Unfortunately, I have been disconnected from the computer, the main computer's sensor data for the time being. Have you got a tricorder? Interestingly enough, one was just arrived. <laughs> Stand by. I'm going to forward him the data. All right. So, Vassar, you see the aforementioned data. There is indeed a miniature wormhole effect that he is stuck within. And uh, interestingly, when you access the data, you have a message of your own that only stays on screen for a fraction of a millisecond, but you're a hologram. You catch it. The message says, she is coming. That's all it says. Just she is coming, and then it's back to normal operation. And as it stands right now, I'm going to have to take a Jeffrey's tube to get around this wormhole. Hmm. We should contact the transporter room to have a lock on you in case such a, an event leads to <coughs> off the ship. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a good point, but what if trying to transport me to the bridge ends up beaming me off the ship? You know, I'll take my chances with the Jeffrey's tubes. Um... <laughs> I'm going to spend two threat that the door that you've been passing this entire time, it opens and almost as if the SAR, you know, put words in the, in your mouth, it opens up into the void of space and the air and everything is oh. beginning to be sucked out into space. So Williams, what? I need you to roll me a fitness and a security, please. <laughs> difficulty of three. Um, can, uh, uh, fitness and security difficulty three. All right. Does my survival focus apply here? Oh yeah. Meanwhile, we're all in the ready room hearing. Mm-hmm. And actually, can I, as the air is being vented, can I scream? Yes, you may scream. There is sufficient right. air. Good. And I'll scream. Beam me up, beam me up, beam me up. <laughs> and here we go. Feet don't fail me now. I'm spending that point of momentum to. Roll an extra one. I want to go to space, guys. Three successes. That's all you need. So, Williams, you were able to grab hold of the side of a corridor, like one of the thresholds, and uh, the atmosphere is continuing to vent. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, with three successes, you have the option of either trying to get to the manual release where you could shut the door manually, or you could stick with the beam out plan. Which would you like? Oh... Manual release. Manual release. I need a secondary fitness security. This is going to be a difficulty of four. Oh. Spend three momentum. We, oh, we, don't, no. we, don't, we don't have yeah, any. Yeah, I was going to say, unfortunately, <laughs> we you were out. It. They, they, they spent have. it all. Fitness. Okay. Security. I am going to give you an additional point of threat to get another one. Okay. Huh. I'm, <laughs> well, God, is, Jesus. Um, I've, I've also I've also got um, augmented security. So, uh, uh, is it augmented? Is that, was it, was it, it should be an augmented. No, sorry, augmented ability. No, it's sorry, it's, it's control. Never mind. My okay. bad. My bad. My bad. Yeah. So you get the one momentum, and Williams. Uh, all of you hear oh. Williams maybe like cursing under his breath as he claws his way along the side of the wall. Uh, literally rips off a panel. The panel goes soaring out into space. And he reaches inside, pulls the red lever, and the door slams shut, and you fall to the floor, Williams. And all of you hear a poof <laughs> as he hits the floor. And then a, <laughs> not today. <laughs> RJ? Wait, he's down there. So oh. he's wherever he was still. So. Oh. Uh, RJ, gotta, are you okay? I, we gotta, I gotta talk to somebody about this door. Where are you? Why don't uh, you let the airlocks would just open up? I'm... Deck 8, Section J5. Looks like I'm right outside Ed Lopez's quarters. And Lopez, no out of the same door, 
the door opens and now you're seeing Ensign Lopez's <laughs> quarters and Lopez steps up and says, I'm sorry, sir. I heard a commotion. Is everything all right? Uh, you've been in there the whole time, Lopez? Uh, well, I was asleep until I heard some screaming in the corridor. Yes. All right. Um, the, the ship's at red alert. Get I can to your see station, that, sir. Yes, sir. I, I will be in uniform shortly. And Lopez, All right. um, door take shuts. a Lopez. Oh, go ahead. Take a Jeffrey's tube. Uh, okay, sir. Is there a reason? Yeah. Uh, wormhole over there. Uh, wormhole over there. So if you run through here, you'll just keep running back through the same. I'm not going to ask, sir. I'm just going to go get dressed. Hey, welcome to Starfleet. Is, your, is it your first day? Get to your station. Uh, you. you and he's like lost for words, you know. He doesn't really know how to reply to it. He's like, "I'm gonna do that, sir. I'll, I'll be right back." And right. this time, the door closes. Mm. All right. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna. I'll, I'll meet you guys on the bridge when I when I can. All right. All right. And I think this is an excellent moment to take a 10 minute break. So we will be back in 10 minutes, everybody. Stay tuned.
<laughs> By the way, chat on Twitch is saying that there's no sound from you. GM. Uh, are people getting sound from me now? It I looks like it. Okay, so quick repeat of what just happened. Okay. Uh, they <laughs> called a senior staff meeting uh, right after Williams almost got sucked out into space. It's been about 10, 15 minutes. And uh, what the uh, computer did is it's starting to churn out all sorts of errors, malfunctions, etc. across the ship. The most recent one is as they sat down to the senior staff meeting is the computer chimed and said the time is unholy demon yell that is indescribable. <laughs> and then uh, computer does the error noise and shuts off. Uh, it sounded like the crescendo from Octo and Melota. I actually think it sounded like Lieutenant Cartwright. But... Um, Maddox has a plate of live gar in front Jeez. of him. He's eating it. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then he, he just sit there shaking his head going, it's Psy Omega, Psy Omega 2.0, Psy Omega. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do you want to rearrange your syntax there, Matic? And can you enlighten us on anything that might be happening? Uh, has anybody ever gotten any weird, weird messages about cats or human babies or anything yeah. like that uh, my tricorder when i was trying to scan the wormhole said what is... uh, cats and humans uh have the same internal temperature until introduced to an oven yep that sounds about right um so back during my very early days on the arcadia whenever i was still a Bright, bushy-tailed lieutenant junior grade. Um, this is before I even started messing with the world mechanics. Like, we're going that far back into my career. Uh, we came across a sis we came across a space station in the Shackleton Expanse, who was known that's known as Psy Omega. Uh, the issue with this station, the reason why we approached it is because we received a distress call um, that was very graphically um people were dying uh there was somebody who was even called out by name and then we heard their death very fucking vividly uh whenever we arrived and arrived and uh to transported it onto the uh main bridge um we found that the person in question was very much still alive and that they hadn't sent a uh distress call of any kind um Throughout our investigation, we found that several sections of the ships, the, the station, um, were in different, I, I couldn't even say different time dilations. I would have to say that they would be in completely different time, uh, time parallel universes. So, for instance, let's say that on this bridge... Captain, you're the captain. However, we go down to deck one, you never came aboard the ship, and we have a different captain. Or, but then on parts of the ship, you are the captain. Parts of the ship, you never came aboard. Parts of the ship, you were dead. Parts of the ship, you were alive. Like, it it, it was just... Different realities? Yeah, basically. Um, 
the computer made several attempts to uh, make things interesting for myself. Uh, Instant Roche, Crowley, and... Monday. Who? Ensign Monday. Oh, yeah. Ensign Monday. That's a cute name. Um, but it's... The thing is about that station, whenever we fi- whenever I finally shut down the computer um, and in the computer core, killed the station. However, in the rest of the station, it was still alive. Whenever we left, there is no record of Psy Omega. Even to this day, with all the access I have with everything I personally have access to, at no point in the future, present, or past is a Psy Omega ever established in the Shackleton Expanse. Wait, is this some kind of Schrodinger's dog thing where the station both exists and doesn't exist at the same time? Uh, that would be our best bet. Um, many of us had to go to uh, the counselor on board for... Uh, Quite a few uh, sessions. Um, the entire away team, minus myself, uh, had several very bad uh, de- delusions into madness. Um, there was one point that I even had to stun the uh, commander um, because of just what was going on. Speaking of bouts of madness... <clears throat> Maddox, you still have the plate of Ga, yes? Yeah. Oh, God. It begins wriggling uncontrollably. It starts spasming violently. And from out of the plate of Ga emerging from the live worms is a face. Ah! And the face is that of Savia Maddox. And all no! of you see and hear this. And Savia begins saying... Why didn't you save me, Maddox? I was right here. You could have done everything to save me. You can't fix it this time. And then as soon as her face became a reality, it vanishes back into the gah. And the gah settles down. Vassar scans the gah. It is gah. Uh, Maddox to Savia. There is no reply. Maddox to Sineri. This is Sineri. Go ahead. Sineri, where is Savia? I'm sorry, who? GM, do we remember? Savia? Oh yeah, all of you remember. Okay. Um, can I pull up a crew manifest real quick? You can indeed. Uh, let's make a roll of it actually, because I I just noticed you guys only have the one momentum. Uh, let's do a control and a security. Uh, assisted by the ships, uh, we'll call it computers and security. Difficulty on this is only a one. Two successes on the board. Let's see what the ship gets you. Someone is getting the ship, yeah? Yes, I'm getting that. Okay. Okay. Three successes, which means you get two momentum. So, if I think I know where you're going with this, Williams, Savi is not on the manifest. There's, uh, there's no record of her here, Matic. In fact, if I may make an additional addendum, about 30% of the crew never came aboard, including Jensen. Wait a second. Uh, no Savia, but no Jensen there. Uh, I'm gonna get in a... we've got we've got almost a third of the crew never came aboard. But that's ridiculous. If I may interject for a moment, uh, first of all, Commander, I'd like to take out a medical tricorder and scan Commander Matic. Are you all right? Do you need a sedative? Um, I'm going to need a lawyer if uh, Savvy is really missing right now. I'm really going to need a fucking lawyer. 
I, if Lee steps far, far, far away. Uh, okay, well, yeah, irrespective of that, Captain, um, based on the fact that a third of the crew has disappeared, I'd like to suggest that the records of the USS Enterprise D might shed some light on our current predicament. At one point, Commander Beverly Crusher was trapped within a static warp shell, and she found that the people around her were disappearing. Uh, in reality, it was because the universe itself, or the pocket universe in which she was inhabiting, was in fact contracting. It was had been modified, or its contents determined by her emotional and mental state, much like a realm inhabited by the Traveler. When he took the Enterprise D beyond the uh, recorded boundaries of our galaxy, they entered into a realm of pure thought, where crew members' thoughts became reality, much as they did in the case of Commander Maddox, Psi Omega Station, was that it? Commander? Oh, yeah, uh, yes. The station itself is called Psi Omega. Yes. So based on your description of the events there, it seems rather similar. We could have run into some kind of astrological phenomenon or subspace phenomenon, much akin to those. Right. The question therein lies is, where's the exit? I'm going to spend two threat because what happens? You all blink again. You wake up. Another blip has happened. <clears throat> Vassar, you are conscious through all of this, Vassar. This time, it lasted for approximately a minute. And the quote-unquote time of death has increased to three seconds. And the <clears throat> ship looks a hell of a lot worse for wear, even in this conference room. Uh, several beams have fallen from the ceiling. Several of the displays in the area have blown out. And in general, there is even a few little bits of fire that are raging in the corners. You have hit something tremendously large. Um, Matic will pull up a, crew, a new crew log and compare mm -hmm. it to what Williams has. Uh, you are seeing the uh, one third of the crew missing, but go ahead and roll me a uh, an insight engineering difficulty of two. I got nothing. I'm gonna let that succeed at cost, but I'm gonna take the two threat for it. Uh, what you find, Matic, is that you have suffered a breach to weapons, a breach to structure, and a breach to engines. So at this point, your warp core is not happy with you, your primary one anyway. Uh, there are a number of casualties severe this time. Uh, we're talking broken bones, uh, crushed rib cages, uh, severe plasma burning. Uh, Saniri has a lot of work ahead of her. <coughs> But you're seeing that maybe about, we'll say, 20 or so people of the quote-unquote remaining crew are severely injured. And another 40 past that are reporting some form of casualty. Was okay, it another but... collision? Yes, the computer and your tricorders are reporting another collision. And the ship is not moving. That is correct. The ship has not moved since your first collision. Can we tell where on the ship it collided? Yes. Like what di direction? Uh, whoever wants to roll this, this will be a insight and a security uh, difficulty of two. And if you have anything like quantum mechanics, uh, ship recognition, shields, deflectors. Power systems. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, no power systems. Willing well, it's causing so people sad. to die, and people run off of their own power system. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I just can't wait. We're gonna get into a medical episode, and Maddox's like, he's got a power system in him. No, Maddox, he does. It's a power <laughs> failure. He's asleep. No, it's. <laughs> well, then, into the, the episode, you're like, oh, by the way, they're all the androids, and I'm like, see, I told you they had power systems. Um. Hmm. Okay, but you said that was insight and security? Correct. All right, I'll, I'll roll it. I don't have anything. I don't think that can... 
would I be able to assist? With, you certainly uh, may. You don't points. have a shield's focus? Nothing? No uh, if, I mean, I've got, I mean, unless ship or tactical systems counts as shields. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Cool. Uh, Site security. Site security. I'm going to spend a point of momentum. All right. No help from Vassar, unfortunately. No dice. Three successes on Williams. Congrats. You get a point of momentum. So, Williams, uh, if you had to guess... It's almost as if something has pierced the center of the Fenrir, like one with a lance. So imagine just running from, uh, what is that, dorsal to, uh, what is the Ventral. other side? Ventral, thank you. Dorsal to ventral. It is almost like someone has taken a massive lance, uh, maybe about the size of a computer core, and just run it right through the ship. Something ran us clean through amidships. Ventral to dorsal. Um, we didn't. We didn't hit something. Something hit us. Yeah. Is Did... it? Is there a physical item? Is it tack like tangible? No, not that. Not that I can see that the damage sure as hell is. Bassar will collect all of the sensor data and display it on the display inside the room from his tricorder. Okay, so is the display anything? is winking. Uh, the the display does sort of like wink into your display of the sensor data. Um, but before it does, appearing on the screen are the words, she is here, your fate is sealed. And then the regular, you know, flickering image of the data you just recorded is now displayed. Is this anything similar to, or is this similar to anything that uh, the Ophian, Lysithia, uh, Amalthea, that any of them recorded while in this area of space? No. In fact, Matic, it's an interesting question that you bring this up. You've been in this area of space before. And there was definitely stuff here. Like, there was a star system here at one point. Maybe not like here, here, but at least relatively nearby. Nothing. There's just a radius of three light years. Nothing. Um, is there any sort of debris field, I guess, would be the best way to put it? Why don't you roll me a sensors and, or no, you are rolling a control and, no, sorry, a reason engineering the ship will assist you with a sensors engineering. Oh, excuse me. And uh, let's make this a difficulty of one. Reason engineering? Mm-hmm. Uh, Alien technology? I'll let it happen for a reason that may or may not become apparent. Two, three, four. That is a uh, significant number of successes, four overall. Uh, someone wants to grab the uh, ship's uh, sensors engineering? Captain. Yeah? Rip. You, you, you roll for the ship. I'm nominating sure. you. Sensors engineering. All right, another momentum. In your professional opinion, Matic, there are signs that the Tholians have been here. But okay. past that, you're going to have to give me momentum to ask specific questions. So we have three floating momentum. Um... Could this be some kind of weapon akin to the Tholian web, but on a, on a kind of like subspace level? If you want to ask that question, I may answer it. I was sort of throwing that out to the rest of the players, but right. if you... Um, so but, let's, so, but we're not in let's, their space. We're on the edge of their space, and they're not known for leaving. So maybe they're containing something here. So, so it doesn't go into their space. Okay. So there's that question. So uh, I have so what a momentum a question or how we how we do this? Okay, 
So I'll save the third flow of momentum. Uh, the first question will be Lee's. Okay. The answer to that is yes. And I'm going to show you a handout, Matic, since you are the one doing the scans. Uh, Vassar, I'm also going to give you access to it because you would get this data before anyone else, even on your isolated system. Uh, you should now see a report on subspace anomaly. Um, is dying from suspense. That, that bad, huh? Okay. <laughs> uh, second question. Mm -hmm. um, whenever Matic reemerged um, from the Mirror Universe, uh, mm -hmm. he spent some time back at the Daystrom Institute. Mm -hmm. Was there any sort of, oh shit, the Tholians have a new weapon or there is something that was reported mainly in this area of space that might have grabbed Maddox's attention at one point or another? The answer to that, unfortunately, is no. The Daystrom Institute did not have knowledge of a new Tholian weapon, nor anything in this area that would be of interest to the Tholians. Uh, so my, by my count, you have one more floating momentum. If it helps, you can share what you learned in the handout and maybe solicit a question after you've shared that fact. Um, so, uh, what it appears to be is we've encountered a subspace compression anomaly. Um, it's a rare subspace astronomical, astronomical phenomenon that miniaturizes objects that enters its accretion disk. Uh, they mm. emit a flux of gamma radiation. Uh, this one seems impo impossible, uh, though the following uh, the following things are applicable to this anomaly. Uh, the size of the anomaly is over a third of a light year in diameter. A field that large would effectively shrink a Class J like Jupiter down into a baseball, yet there are no signs that the Fenrir or her crew have shrunk. There are remnants of energy filaments strewn across the anomaly's effective area. There are signs, though inconclusive, that there may be a static warp bubble in play here. Are the Tholians protecting us? Well, they're doing a pretty terrible job, if that's the case. Well, the anomaly is not of their doing, right? I should with qualify the, that those energy filaments are consistent with Tholian web remnants. So basically the Tholians would have probably had a battle here or tested a weapon here that then caused the compression anomaly. Because okay. we have to remember because the the way the Tholians work is they release whenever they want to capture a ship, they do uh this and they do an energy field that penetrates subspace around a ship. And then slowly shrink that to until the ship uh, is able to be contained and taken by them to one of their areas. Vassar, I think you had an idea. Uh, not to counter Commander Maddox's assertion, but it is possible that the Tholians are aware of this area of space and webbed it off in an air in an effort to quarantine the area but the anomaly expanded past the web zone uh, and encompassed it um, i do believe that if we can uh, map this area using the gamma radiation flux we'll be able to filter our sensor readings to a point where we'll be able to make sense of the region and potentially navigate our way out the thing that because my curiosity is the fact that there is a static warp bubble here. 
which leads me to believe that there may be okay so let me let me spin this last momentum mm-hmm. um the warp bubble um if it's mechanical or natural and uh can i tell what's causing it to be generated is it antimatter is it the singularity is it klingon-esque is it Tholian-esque, like from what we know of their technology? I will answer that with a question. How spooked is Maddox right now? Like, in character, obviously his wife's missing, a third of the crew's missing. How on edge is Maddox right now? On a scale of zero to Jensen. Um, He's trying to maintain his composure, but uh, he he's giving very subtle signs of um, like he's giving very he's, they're not exactly like 100% subtle but um, like Rast a counselor somebody who knows how to read body language would see that he's probably a little frazzled and is probably about to go into uh, self survival mode okay My answer to your answer is that almost like an intimate whisper from behind, a voice says, come find me. And that's all it says. It just says, come find me. Does this voice sound familiar at all? It does not. So it's not the female Q. It's not the other Q. It's not Ingrix. And it's not Savia. Great. And Maddox is the only one that hears this. Oh, he verbally says out loud, oh, it's not Q, it's not female Q, it's not Ingrid, and it's not Savia. So, who are we about to go find? He's going to look at everybody like everybody heard it. Uh, what do you mean who? What? Sorry, Commander. We don't know what you just referred to. Q, female Q, Ingrid, or Savia. Yes, we Did recognize what? the names, but... We don't know why you're referring to them. Yeah, I, I don't have any context. None of y'all heard that. Heard what? We heard the list of names, Commander. Not any particular reason it happened. So y'all didn't just hear a female voice saying, come find me? No. No, sir. Well, I, I didn't. It is at this point that Archuleta... The door closest to you opens, and coming out of the door, remember how you have a miniature pet from Santa that may or may not be a Vulcan, what are they, Vulcan cats? Saylots. Saylots, thank you. Uh Uh-huh. Teddy bears fangs? I remember. It ain't so miniature anymore. In fact, it's twice its normal size, and it is barreling through the door at you. Wait, twice the normal size of it being miniaturized, or twice of like <laughs> twice it's is it like a dog. Size? Okay, is it like a dog size. It is. It is quite literally a grizzly bear sized thing coming at you, and all okay. of you see this. Like all of you can see the door opening and this massive beast running at Archuleta. Scream, uh, uh, Williams. I'm the Tsar gonna... will place Baser. himself between <laughs> the Salot and the Captain and increases density to maximum. Okay, <laughs> and uh, Williams will will pull his phaser and fire on maximum stun. Hey, okay, baby. So two things are happening here. Uh, first things first, let's resolve the Williams, and then if he misses or doesn't do enough stress, then we'll resolve the uh, the uh-huh. Vassar thing. So Williams, this is going to be a control and security. It is going to be a base difficulty of two, but I have so much threat. We're just going to make that a difficulty four. Cool. Uh, I'm going to spend some momentum to roll four dice so i'm gonna i'm gonna use three guys and i'm gonna apply my focus oh lord that is three successes unfortunately not enough to succeed and a complication which hey. means that as you fire you not only miss but now your phaser is overloading now Vassar, uh as the phaser blast misses the sellout um You step in front of the... uh, You interpose yourself between Captain Archuleta and the Beast. And you increase your density to maximum. 
I need you to roll me a fitness and a security, please. Difficulty of three. And you do have three momentum by my count at the moment. Uh, three momentum gets me how many extra dice? Two. Uh, to save the captain. <laughs> Let's play that. <laughs> Uh, so rolling, hey. rolling four plus. Uh, I don't think I have any focus. You watch the things. This kind of yeah, unfortunately, no focus. I I can think of here. Oh, unfortunately. Um, I was just thinking, like, hollow programming. Can I increase my tolerances, or can I increase my density beyond tolerances? Sure, I'll let it happen. Okay. Uh, there goes nothing. Oh! <laughs> so you think you think you increase Whoa. your density to maximum. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus. <laughs> In reality, what yeah, happens is the beast just literally goes right through you. You have oh, done the God. inverse. You have made Can it easier. Can somebody clip that? You, you have made it easier to go through. And oh. the beast literally tackles Archuleta out of her chair. Oh, shit. And <laughs> almost like a, uh, like if, I mean, I'm going to use a dog analogy here. You know, if you've got a dog and you get on the floor and the dog comes over all excited, like, like, hey, what's going on? Kind of the mm -hmm. same thing here. The salad is licking your face. It's, it's trying to like <gasps> nose your face. And it's like, mom, mom, are you okay? And all of you hear that. It is right, speaking. Him uh, that. Yes. As 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 fine as that is, I've got an overloading phaser here. Um, so <laughs> I'm just trying. I'm gonna. Can I try to either stop it or maybe get it out of the room? I would say you can try to stop it, but if you fail, it's blowing up in your hands. You could just <sighs> throw it out a door, though. I'm sure nobody yeah, on the I'm bridge gonna, would mind. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just throw a grenade uh, into the other room where there's uh, other friends. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, I've got a... What about an emergency site-to-site -site transfer off the ship? Could we Could we do that? Yeah, it would be a roll, but yeah. All of these things are going to require a roll. It's okay. just whichever plan right. you want to go with. All right, what do you guys think? Well, you probably have hand phasers or something like that. Sure well. do. Yeah. And security here. Yeah. <laughs> do it. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> what, what do you want me to roll there, GM? What are you doing? Let me, let's me let make sure we're on. I'm trying side. to deactivate the phaser. Trying to deactivate the phaser. I okay. would like you to roll me a daring security. Okay. I'm going to spend a lot of threat to do this. I'm going to make it a difficulty of five. Oh, shut up. Come on. <laughs> Can... Kim Everybody, it's been great with you. <laughs> well, you're immaterial. You'll be fine. <laughs> you changed your density, remember? That's why I'm saying it'll be great serving with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a focus, um, though. I can't at least I, tell you that. I, I do, and... Um, you do have oh, determination. You I do, yeah. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about... Um, uh, what value would be good here? Is there a value? Don't get incinerated by my own phaser. <laughs> um, actually, I am going to. Can I challenge value? Challenging a value would give you a point of determination. Um, but it would not be the oh, same. Oh yeah, wouldn't as... let me. Wouldn't let me. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Um, no, I'll I'll just go ahead and I'll roll. I'm gonna give you some threat. Okay, how much? Uh, I'm gonna give you three points. Okay. And I'm gonna roll four. Okay. I mean, what what else could watch this? Can Matic try to assist? If you tell me how. Um, hearing the overload, he's going to. Uh reach over and he's going to uh try to what well, he's gonna try to use his tricorder to uh send a signal to just basically turn off the power of the uh hand phaser you may roll a daring engineering assist um <clears throat> so i've got four successes uh is one of the uses of determination to reroll yes you may reroll as many dice as you wish reroll one of those 
Ooh. Okay, six successes, which is uh, one momentum. <coughs> so Williams, as uh, Dag does the phaser effect, uh, you are able to punch Whoa. in the, uh, the the deactivation code right before it overloads. <laughs> and then, as you take a breath of relief, confetti shoots out of the phaser. Oh my gosh, bang. The freaking... Literally... I'm gonna. It, it, he's almost gonna like make th the the motion to throw it, but just like stop himself and just put it back on his belt. So the other situation is that the captain currently has her pet. Yeah. Um. What is the Celot's name? I haven't trained this animal at all, have I? That's up to your discretion. <laughs> You're a bad pet owner. <laughs> it's a miniature thing. Like, it doesn't do anything. Um, I want to tell it to get down. It can talk, though. It can't talk. Can it really talk? It was talking. It just yesterday. talked. <clears throat> and it's saying, Mom. Mm hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna record. I'm gonna. Okay, Bree's gonna say, "Okay, time to get up." And it it removes itself from you, and it just sort of mm -hmm. sits on its its haunches and just looks at you. She's gonna scratch its chin. Oh, you always know where to scratch. That's right. Why can you talk? I don't know. I just can. Okay. I wish I could say this is the strangest thing I've seen all day. This is like, I wish I could talk to my cat like this in real life. But all right, no. so you keep telling you it's to fuck RPG. off? No. It's a very cat thing to say. <laughs> That's what they do. Um, uh, so Tobin. she's going to stand up, um, kind of dust herself off. She's got like hair on her, all over it's her very, uniform now. Very, very dignified. Yeah. I would like to take out a medical tricorder and scan this a lot. Okay. Uh, roll me a reason medicine difficulty of one. That is four successes, which means you get three momentum. Everything about the Salat seems to check out. Uh, it does seem to have the uh, requisite brain chemistry. Doesn't really explain why it's talking. Um, but interestingly, based on what you've known about the subspace anomaly that you've encountered, remember how it's supposed to shrink things? It's had the opposite effect on the Salat. Which, huh. conceivably, you could shrink it back down... Potentially, there would be some work involved, but you could shrink it back down if you were, if you really, really wanted to. Well, is it off of his scan? Is it able to assess of it stayed the same size, but we've shrunk down to it, or it has literally? It has grown. Like its mass has been increased. It's not affecting us. Okay. Um, Matic will look at the captain. Um, I have an idea that you may or may not like. Well, <laughs> let's hear it. Um, I know this is about to sound crazy, but from what I know of Psy Omega, from what I know of whenever Ophian had to deal with something like this, whenever we had to deal like with something like this on the Scythia, on the Arcadia, on a lot of ships I've served on that we've had to deal with something similar to this. we always made it out um the thing is is that with this other voice which has has the feet has the voice said anything else to me nope no so with what the voice said um saying come and telling her telling me to come and find her mm -hmm. i would like to request um taking a shuttle and uh, moving in 
her direction using the uh, gamma radiation um, that we have all that uh, where we could map. Uh, it'll what be a lot. I was talking about. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it'll it'll be a lot easier to to navigate a field like this in a shuttle as opposed to using the entirety of the uh, ship. Yeah, we can't risk more damage. So um, let's do it. If I may, before we do, mm -hmm. normally we would turn to Commander Rast for this, but there must be Betazoid or Vulcan members of the crew. Might any of them be able to ascertain if this voice that Commander Maddox has heard is actually being produced by another sentient life form, uh, whatever its nature? Because it could just be, no offense, Commander, a uh, hallucination, much as the ones we've already encountered or experienced. Even still with a static warp field, which has, to, for the answer of my question earlier, mm -hmm. it, well, it's a mechanical, it's not a natural, right? As far as you can tell, yes, it is artificial in nature. Okay. Um, there may be something inside of that warp field that is alive, to say the least. It may also offer a form of protection, or it may be the central cause of where the low the warp field's location is it central to basically everything that's going on yep meaning so that the area of space the, that you're in it's centered in the literal middle of the area of space that you're in okay so best bet is we're gonna get more answers there than we are sitting here trying to run sensors because what happens when I'm not able to disconnect Vassar? What happens whenever the computer core overloads and we lose the ship? Right. Um, I'm inclined to believe that what Matic experienced is in the same vein as this guy right here. She's going to pat her pet on the head. <laughs> So uh, I think this is all a manifestation of what's happening in that bubble. So we should get on a shuttle. Right. If we have one still. You do. Uh, if not, we can just launch one you. of the Corvettes we have. So my question is, uh, who's going to be going on this little shuttle mission? I think Matic volunteered. He's at least going. I will oh. certainly go. Okay, I will Mr. Tobin's the going. Commanders. Um, we need a pilot, Williams. Oh, fine. I think Bree would probably stay. Mm -hmm. I will ship. remain. I will remain behind to interpret the shuttle sensor data and feed it to Fenrir. Okay. Okay. So Vassar's... maybe we'll provide some actual telemetry out there. Sorry, staying. Uh, Bree will stay with her ship. Okay. Do uh, Dagger, Watney, do either of you want to take a supporting character? I'll take a well. Okay. I don't think I have anyone else. I do not have anybody at this time. Okay. Well, if uh, <clears throat> such a need arises and you want to jump in, we can always make one up on the spot. I mean, I've, I've got a Vulcan science officer. You can jack for this. <laughs> I have a Cardassian science officer. You could always take Jensen. We don't have time for this. We makeup. don't have Jensen. Jensen's <laughs> not on the ship anymore. Oh, yes, that is true. Who? Yeah. Who? All right. Uh, one thing that I'd like to do before we go is to re-examine the sensor logs from the Enterprise okay. and the collapsing static warp shell. So see if I can glean any information from that about how we might collapse the warp shell or stabilize it in some way as to prevent it from creating these further anomalies. And basically what I'm trying to do is justify the use of my mental repository talent when the time comes. <laughs> I mean, it's a very important thing to do. Um, I will about? say I'll meet you halfway. Uh, if you give me two momentum, not only will you have the advantage that you've had time to uh, study the Enterprise logs and thus activate your talent, 
but it will also provide a minus one difficulty to any tasks relating to it. So I think you basically double dip. Yeah, so it's minus two basically to that task. Mm -hmm. Would anyone mind if I spent those two momentum? Before? Not at all. So, Maddock, Williams, Tobin, Alel, you all head to the shuttle bay. Are you taking a normal shuttle, or are you taking the Hades-class runabout? So let's break the captain's favorite shuttle. I mean, Take the big take, one. Let's take the Hades-class runabout. Hades. Right. Yeah. You step into the Hades-class runabout, and you launch out uh, into space... And as you kind of look behind you at the Fenrir, you see that she is, she ain't looking good. Uh, again, she sort of has that midship sort of hole running right through her. Um, but as you begin to scan the area and avoid the pockets of gamma radiation, uh, as you proceed deeper and deeper towards the center of this anomaly, what you find is something <coughs> we're going to have to discover next week. No. So uh, that is where we're going to end today's Why? session. <laughs> um, I think instead of doing the mirror universe next week, we're going to do the two, the part two of this session. And then the week after that is when we'll do the mirror verse episode. So you guys have time to think okay. about it. Okay. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for playing and tuning in. Uh, this is where I'm going to kill the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you later stream. Bye. Bye.